All right, in this uh, in this update, I'm going to be talking to you guys about how I have went from just simply displaying um, graphical things to the screen and talk about the actual object loader file that I have where I imported a skull and I now have it rotating. So first things first, I'm going to go into my object loader. And of course, it's just going to be a very basic thing. We're going to have a constructor for the object loader um, reference. And... Um, and all this stuff is automatically going to delete itself once it's been created. And then we're going to go into our static vector threes, where we're going to have our vertices, our UV cords, and our normals. And those are all going to be kind of relevant to actually matching up with the OBJ file, as the OBJ file essentially is just a, a giant compilation of numbers that all um, get put into either your vertices, your, v, your UV cords, or your normals, which is kind of where the, uh, the 3D shape will come from. So moving on, we're going to go into the gameobject.cpp, and essentially what we're looking at here is we're going to be grabbing our mesh and our shader, so that way that the object kind of knows what's going to interact with it. Um, without the mesh, the uh, the object isn't going to actually have like a proper physical body, and then the shader is going to be how the, the lighting and everything interacts with it, instead of just phasing through it as if it doesn't exist. And then of course, we're just going to use the temporary variables to set our mesh to mesh and our shader to shader, so that we can pull them from other classes. And then in our destructor here, we're just going to, if there's a mesh, we're going to delete it to free up some memory, because we're we're not really using too many um, pointers around here. And then in our update, essentially what we're, what we're going to be doing here is I'm going to be, um, this is the earlier build of the code where I actually had the update function from the game object rotating the model um, um, on kind of like an exponential number based on a vector three and then a float of rotation. So if I were to change this number right here, it kind of change how it's rotating. And if I change um, the X, the Y, and the Z, that's where they're going to be rotating around. So right now on the X, it's going to be doing a front flip towards us because that's the axis it's rotating around. And then when we go down here, it's um, simple um, OpenGL stuff that we're looking at, our model matrix ID, where we're getting the uniform location, we're getting the shader to point to the program, and then we're going to get our model matrix from the, um, from the shader files. And then same with the normal matrix ID, we're going to get the uniform location, get the shader to point to the program, and the normal matrix, and that's essentially just going to have everything come together and work perfectly. Um, then right here at the bottom, obviously, we're going to set our model matrix ID, um, our GL to false, and then we're going to apply that to our model, um, if, along with the buffer there. And then we're going to take our matrix 3, normal matrix is going to be equal to model, um, because that is now a, ma um, a matrix 3, so we're actually going to be able to apply those two to each other. We're going to take our normal matrix ID, set the buffer to 1, GL to false again, and the normal matrix, and then we're just going to render the mesh. And essentially that there is going to come into coming to play here with our scene zero, um, which is going to be very similar to what we had initially, where we're just, um, instead of a sphere, it's going to be a skull now. So um, we have our camera pointer, our ball pointer, and our light source. And nothing new down here. So essentially when I go into my scene, oh, sorry, wrong one, scene zero, I'm just going to clear that guy out just to clean things up. You can see that um, this is still older builds of my, um, my program, so you can see that I have kind of lazily included everything up here in scene zero when I should be including that in scene dot h instead of the cpp, but that has been fixed in the future update. So essentially right here, you can see this is where our object loader is being called in, and I can change this to any other objects that I have saved in my, uh, my resource files, essentially. So right now I'm pulling the skull object, and if it equals false, then it will return false, meaning that there was no object actually properly pulled out. We're going to be applying our mesh pointer and um, properly loading the the polygon triangles, the uh, the vertices, normals, and UV cords, and doing similar with the, the shader taking from the GLSLs, uh, the vertex, the normal, and the texture coordinates, and then all of that's going to come together and get applied to our ball, which is essentially our skull now. Um, and then right here, what we're doing is I'm taking the light source, and I'm just shining it right at the bottom up into the, uh, the bottom of the skull, as it's um, just to kind of give it a bit of a spooky effect while it's doing front flips for us. Um, of course, we're just going to have ball update with delta time, so it's going to match the frame rate and the tick rate of the, the game, or the, uh, the graphics engine, sorry. And then what we're doing here is we're clearing the color here so that we can actually um, clear the whole image. We're going we're gonna to get the program, and we're going to take our ball, point it towards the shader and the program, allowing it to actually have the shaders in the program know where and how to act with the ball. Then we're going to take our projection matrix, our view matrix, and the light position, and um, get the uniform location of all three of those and apply them to the for program as well. Um, before we take the uniform matrix and add our projection matrix, um, buffer our false, and then camera is going to get the projection matrix so it kind of knows what it's going to be rendering and what it's going to be looking at. Um, and then the same with the view matrix. We're just kind of setting up our camera here so that everything's going to be nice and proper and that way we can actually observe what's going on in this space because without this line of code here, essentially we're just going to have a bunch of stuff happening that isn't rendered because we have nothing to observe what is happening. And then finally, of course, we're going to render our ball, which is actually the skull. 
and then we're not going to use the program anymore. We're going to shut that off with a zero. And essentially, when everything comes together, it's going to look nice and clean. Our skull here is going to be doing some nice flips for us. And like I stated earlier, as you can see, he's, he's rotating around the x-axis, which means he's actually rotating towards us. Um, instead of rotating along it, he rotates around it. And another thing I can do, too, is if I were to go back up and into where the ball is actually rotating, I'm going to go back into my game object.cpp. If I really wanted to, I can make this guy go like, you know, Mach 16, or, you know, give him 30 degrees per second, and he'll be rotating around the z-axis. And these here are normalized values. So essentially, 0.0 um, .0 means 0% of that rotation is going into that, that axis here, whereas a 1 will be 100%. And of course, I can have like slight variations if I really wanted to. But just for the sake, I'm just going to show you kind of how we can manipulate it. And right here, you can see he's going to be rotating in a different axis, and he's just going to be freaking out because he's doing 30 degree rotations every time the program updates. So things are getting real spooky. Um, but yeah, thanks for paying attention to my update, and I'll be back to you guys with further.